joining from the Kentucky Tennessee Division and welcome to Coffee Time with Jesus, our special Advent services. Advent, it means the coming. And as we celebrate this time of year, we're celebrating the coming of Jesus as the Savior of the world. But we're also anticipating his coming again. It's our prayer that during these coffee times with Jesus that you will be blessed as you contemplate the gift of God and um, just his great love for you, but also as you celebrate the coming of Christ and the sure um, fact that he will come again, friends, and he will come for us. God bless you and enjoy the time this morning. Good morning. 
This is the third week in Advent, and we're sharing this morning about the shepherds. Third week in Advent. That means we talked about the angels the first week, the visitors from heaven. The second week, we've talked about the magi, the wealthy men who came from the east to visit Jesus. Today, we talk about the lowly shepherds. We consider them lowly because, frankly, if a family had sheep, the youngest person in the family was the one that took care of the sheep. It also wasn't a job anybody envied. It's a 24-7 job. And not only is, are you with the sheep 24-7, that means you're in the fields with them all the time. These particular sh uh, shepherds that we talk about today were tending their flocks out in the fields outside of Bethlehem. We know that's known as the city of David. So we believe that that's also where David would have tended his father's sheep when he was the youngest in the family. Historians tell us that these shepherds actually may have been um, uh, raising sheep that would be used for sacrifices in the temple. These weren't sheep that would be eaten at some point. They were sacrificial sheep. So if you think about it theologically, the angels visited them. They were raising sacrificial lambs. Jesus became the sacrificial lamb. It could be a whole in-depth Bible study on uh, the theology of that, but we're not going to do that today. Suffice it to say that these shepherds were in the fields near the barn where Jesus was born, and that's why they were called on by the angels to go and see the child. Today we're looking at Luke, the second chapter, beginning at verse 8, and it says this, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Which fields? The ones where David himself may have tended sheep. Notice that they were living in the fields. They were all in. No part-time commitment for these men. They were watching their sheep by starlight in the dark at night, it says. The shepherds came, to, the angels came to them at night. They would have been uh, looking for predators in the night that could come and destroy their sheep. If we, we know that King David himself fought off a lion and a bear to protect his sheep. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, oh my. my. <laughs> Again, King David, maybe the Bible's most well-known shepherd, knew what it meant to be a shepherd and wrote, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It is the shepherd's job to make sure sheep have everything they need and that they are protected. Verse 9 says, An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The King James Version uses the word low. Behold, an angel of the Lord. And that's exactly what they did. The angel appeared to them out of nowhere, and behold, they saw him. The glory of the Lord surrounded them, and they were afraid. When I think about the thought of the surrounding them, the shepherds would always have been on guard to make sure that none of the predators that wanted to eat their sheep would have ever surrounded them. I can imagine that was a pretty scary thing for him, for them. The shepherds would have listened for the rustling grass and the heavy breathing of animals coming to get them, lions and bears, remember? But the angels appeared instantly from heaven, and that must have been a very frightening thing. There was no warning they were coming. And then as the angels stood in front of them, the glory of the Lord surrounded them, the Shekinah glory. What a scary thing that would have been. They must have been shaking in their boots. But the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. That's such a simple statement. How do you say to somebody, Don't be afraid. This is all normal. There was nothing normal about it. No. I'm here because I bring you good news, the angel said. Good news, you're scaring us to death, but okay, let's listen. And this is what he said, the, child, the Christ child has been born. They weren't being harassed by people out of the city. They weren't being stalked by predators. They had been approached by a heavenly being, an angel. The good news will bring great joy, and it will be for everyone, the whosoever, all people. Later, Paul would use the same concept to speak to the Galatian church. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. This is indeed good news. Verse 11 says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. 
Notice the word he uses to say to the shepherds, today, it has just happened, and I'm telling you, you're the first people to know besides the mom and dad. And he said, today, I'm telling you, the, the Lord is born to you. It's a personal and very personal idea that Christ came for you and for me. And why are the angels telling them all this? The Savior, the Christ, would save us from our sinful condition and provide us a way back to God. The angel said the Savior is born, but they also said he is the Messiah, the promised one, the one come to deliver them. You know, the Jewish nation had been waiting for their deliverer from bondage for years, centuries. And they thought that that deliverance would be from a human bondage. But it's not. It's from a spiritual bondage and a sin bondage. And they didn't really understand that. It had been promised in Genesis 3, and now it was coming to happen. It was a long-awaited promise, and the Deliverer was here. The Lord, the one who has power and authority and influence, personal and for all mankind. Verse 12 says, This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. The angel just expected them to go. He didn't say, if you want to go check out what I'm talking about. He said, go. And then he said, here's your sign. You're going to a barn. It's just inside the city, but there you will find a manger that is being used as a cradle. The baby will be swaddled in the manger. Think about it. A manger. A place where animals fed. But it had become the place where the... Christ child was laid, the cradle. It was now the Holy of Holies because where God is, that is the Holy of Holies. It's interesting as we look at it, the first visitors, the shepherds, would have been perfectly comfortable approaching the stable. They dealt with animals all the time. We too must feel comfortable approaching Jesus as our Messiah. You know, like the manger, we're unclean vessels that God wants to fill and make holy. Like to the manger approachable, we need to approach God and go to him. Second Chronicles tells us how to do that. You know the scripture in 714. Humble ourselves, pray and seek his face, turning from our wicked ways, and he will forgive our sins. And we too can become the dwelling place, like the manger of the most high God. Amen. God has made himself approachable for us. You remember the story of Genesis when God came down in the cool of the day and walked with Adam and Eve and talked with them, God wants to take us back to that place with the advent of Jesus Christ. What a blessing that is for us. That relationship, that approachable relationship is available for each and every one of us. Jesus came to bring back the ability to go straight to God. The story says that the shepherds go, but before they head off, the angel in glory Watching all of this unfold from heaven can no longer contain themselves. The choir appears in the heavens and they sing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. I like to think they just broke into song and couldn't help themselves. It's a, and it's good news that they bring. Jesus came to bring glory to God. Should it be our goal then to bring glory to God as well? They announce peace on earth, peace between God and man. True peace. God came as a baby king to bring peace, not as a warrior king to demand it. The voice version says the translation of this song says, peace among all people who bring pleasure to God. That peace for us, not world peace, but personal peace activated by God for all of us. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the angels said to one another, excuse me, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. Verse 16, So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Remember when I said the angel just expected them to go? Well, the same thing happens with the shepherds. I like to think that there were two or three of them and they all spoke at the same time. Let's go! It was, it was impossible for them not to go. The angel said, go and find the babe, and they did. When they arrived at the the cradle, I believe that there they, find, they saw the Shekinah glory of God again. There was no doubt in their minds that this was the Christ child that they were talking about. The Messiah, the Savior. What a blessing that must have been for them. Continuing on, 
When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. I love this, these two verses because what they tell us is that we all react differently to Jesus. Some of us cry. Some of us are introspective like Mary was and just ponder what has just happened to them in their lives. But not the shepherds. They couldn't wait to tell everybody they came across about the Christ child they had just seen. What a wonderful thing for us all to just encounter Jesus, process it however we do, and, and deal with it in our own way. We finish with verse 20. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which was just like they had been told. In verse 20, it says the shepherds were glorifying God. Isn't that what the angels sang? Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. I like to think that the song caught on. It became an earworm for them. And every time it came through their minds again, they just sang it. Glory to God in the highest. Christmas is all about waiting. We wait in hope for something unforeseen, unexpected, and inexplicable to occur. Christians, we are living in the time of want waiting. We are between the lightning bolt, the resurrection of Christ, and the thunder, his glorious return. And no matter how long it takes, we must faithfully live and proclaim this message that the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Prepare the way. Hello there, this is Major Art Pennell. Thank you for joining us for Coffee Time with Jesus. If you've enjoyed this video, can you hit that like button? We also have future videos, and so if you can ring the subscription bell, you see what I did there? We'll make sure that you're aware of future videos. Also in the Salvation Army, we know that many people still aren't able to meet in person, but you can support your local core through the Tidely app. And we encourage you, if you can't meet in person, that you sign up for the Tidely app. It's a great way to support the services and programs of your local core. Hey, do you know what? It's Christmas time in the Salvation Army. That's right, it's Christmas time, which means we're extremely busy. But you can help your local Salvation Army by volunteering. Maybe ring a bell or pack a, a food basket or even deliver toys at Christmas. We encourage you to contact your local Salvation Army to see how you can help this Christmas season. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day and hey, Merry Christmas.